Hey everybody, it's me, Channel360, and I'm here with my last review for Bright by Jessica Jung. This is chapters 27, 28, 29, and the epilogue. And it needed to be that way because the epilogue and chapter 29 are virtually nothing. Um, so yeah, it didn't make any sense to create a separate review for them. So this is the end of the book for me, guys. This is the end of the road. Say it with me now. Although we've gone to the end of the book still i can't let go it's a natural who i'm not gonna keep going anyway uh so when we left off at chapter 26 rachel was told by mr no that she's no longer going to be continuing activities with girls forever and Rachel at the beginning of chapter 27 is like flabbergasted like what the fuck how how could this happen and Mr. No basically explains to her that the night before all eight of the other girls got together with DB and said we have this concert in LA and if you guys don't put Rachel out of the group we're not going to go to the concert and so the company decided that since the other girls can't work with Jessica I'm sorry Rachel that they were going to make this ultimatum. We're not going to show up to any events as long as that girl is in the group, which completely runs counter to every single thing this entire book has told us about the relationship between the artist and the label. At every turn, the label has told the girls what to do, has made girls break up with their boyfriends, has manipulated the press for the girls, have managed what business opportunities the girls go to. They manage the girls' entire schedules. The parents show up saying, you need to do these things for our daughters. Yet and still, DB still tells the girls whether or not they even make it from trainee to, to idol. Yet, you mean to tell me that the eight girls decided to put Rachel out the group so the company was just like, yeah, that'll work. So they tell her, you have four more years left to your contract um, and we'll keep you on as a member of the DB family, but you just can't promote with the girls anymore. And then Rachel asks the question, well, what did they say? Like, how could this be the thing? Because she has like, why are you firing me? And they're like, well, the girls said they didn't know about your fashion line, which of course, DB knows that the girls know about the fashion line. It's, it's in the book. There's so many times when DB reps confirm that she's got the fashion line the girls know about it the parents showed up and had the meeting with db about the fact that rachel had the fashion line and they wanted those same opportunities for their girls everyone knew about the fashion line so for the girls to come to db saying we had no idea about the fashion line even db knows that's a lie that's a crock of shit um so anyway uh they tell her basically you need to put out a press statement saying that you're sick to explain why you're not at the LA concert and then we'll handle the rest from there. So she goes home with her mother and when she gets home, she gets on like a group conversation with her mom, her sister Leah, her dad, and then Alex over the laptop. And Alex, Alex says all of the things that I would say in terms of he's like, this makes no fucking sense. When you're running a business and your employees say that they're going to revolt, uh, you basically tell them, okay, we're going to have, we're going to have your flights ready to leave in the morning. If you don't show up, let's just see what happens. And I'm thinking the same thing because based on what the book says, with the way that the company runs the girls, fine, don't show up then. Don't show up and see what happens. One thing is a precedent here, and you need to understand this. There have been groups that have left their labels. Um, Beast, that's now Highlight, they left their label. Um, I think Vix is probably done with their label at this point. There have been groups that have left their label. No group that has left their label has ever been picked up by another major label. It's just never happened. In this whole time that we've had K-pop, You've never seen a group, a whole group, leave a YG and go to JYP. Or see a whole group leave a JYP and then go to SM. Even GOT7, who recently left JYP in the last year and a half, I guess, 
they didn't go to another major label. They had their own kind of boutique label set up going on. And GOT7 and Highlight are comparatively small groups to an SNSD. So it would have been a big challenge for a group like SNSD to move on. It just would have. Even though they all could have their own careers and everything else, it would have been a really big challenge for a group that big to find another home that would be as accommodating as, SN as SNSD has had on SM. And for the groups that have left their labels, some of them have done better than others, but it's always been a struggle. No one's done as well in their boutique label as they did under their main mainstream label. So it kind of is an empty threat for the eight other members to say, we refuse to work with Jessica. So after my last review, and before I started to do this review, I needed to look up something because in the book, Rachel states very clearly that September the 30th was the day that she decided to put out her letter letting her fans know that she is no longer a part of the group. Because during this group meeting, she asked everybody, what should I do? Should I actually say I'm sick or should I say something else? And her mom's like, follow your heart, listen to your dreams, do what you want to do. Her dad's like, we we don't run from a fight. Alex is like, fuck them bitches. And Leah's like, whatever you do, sis, you're the best person in the world. So that's when she decides to write this letter. So I looked it up because of course this is a very, this is a very followed story in K-pop. So the facts are all out there. And September 30th is the day that Jessica posted her letter to Weibo explaining the reason why she wasn't going to the fan meet that Girls' Generation had set up in China. If you recall, Girls Generation had a fan meet that they were supposed to do in China. It was going to be their first fan meet in China. Fans have been waiting for it, super excited. And Jessica didn't show up. But Jessica had put out the letter on Weibo the night before and people thought that her Weibo had been hacked because they were like, why would Jessica write a letter saying she left Girls' Generation? And in the letter, Jessica says, it is because of my company, Blanc. And she puts out a whole timeline like, um, I have been working on this since this date. I told the company about it. And in the letter, which I, I misremembered it, I thought that Jessica did not implicate the other girls as the reason why she had to leave SNSD. No, 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 ma'am. No, ma'am, no, ma'am, no, ma'am. Not only did she implicate them, she said it flat out. They told me it's either Girls' Generation or it's my company, Blanc and Eclair. And we had a meeting about it a month before. And then my line came out a month ago. And then on the 16th of September, they said A, B, C, and D. And then last night, the company told me I was fired. And today I'm telling you why I was fired. That's what happened in real life. So if you recall... The next day, or that day that they were supposed to be at the airport, all the girls were like, this is the airport. All of them had big glasses on. All of them had their heads down. No fancy airport wear because they knew like things were looking bad. And it was after this that we had the iconic singing. Of, well, it wasn't after, like directly after this. This was like the tour. I want to say this was the tour after the fan sign that we have the iconic singing of Into the New World with all the girls gathered together, holding hands, singing it as a ballad, <laughs> all of that. Uh, masterful, masterful play. I hadn't been on Jessica's side up until now, but I have to say that the Jessica who wrote the letter on Weibo is the Rachel that I wish was in this book because that bitch had a backbone. That bitch said, I'm not gonna be run over. That bitch said, I'm not gonna let a false narrative about what happened get out there to the public and make it to the people who have the most stock in shaping my future. That girl had something really going on. This Rachel, not in a million years would I believe that this Rachel would have done the same things that that Jessica did. And it sucks because in the book, she says after she left the group, she never heard from any of the members of her group ever again. Never talked to them. And remember I had said that I was wanting to know about like 
is she still in contact with any of the members of Girls' Generation? And over the years, I have seen people say, oh, this restaurant Jessica took a picture in, and then three weeks later, another member of Girls' Generation on their Instagram takes a picture of two members in this same restaurant. And all these people trying to put these com context clues together to try to insinuate that Jessica is still on speaking terms or friendly terms with other members of the group. Yeah, based on this book... I'm going to say that's a no, that she doesn't talk to any of those girls anymore, that that thing has completely fallen apart. And here's what I have to say about this. And this is going to be an unpopular opinion. And, you know, I've already said a lot of unpopular things. I've literally lost like 20 subscribers in the last week because of my BTS world is over video. So trust me when I say I'm not a stranger to unpopular opinions. Uh, so... In the book, Rachel is portrayed as being our heroine. She's supposed to be the person that we feel the most sympathy to. She is the protagonist. And it's just jealous people who are constantly uh, trying to ruin her life. And the fact that all eight girls, even girls that she thought she was friends with, ganged up on her to put her out of their group is just one more example of the jealousy that Rachel has to deal with on a daily basis. But unpopular opinion perhaps, I think that maybe Jessica is an unlikable person. Maybe Jessica is doesn't have a great level of self-awareness. Um, I did say in a previous video I thought that maybe Jessica was narcissistic if she's if Rachel's based on her and maybe the other eight girls were right. Maybe the other eight girls were right. Maybe Jessica really was the problem in the group. I'm not saying that she lied in her Weibo letter about why she got put out the group. It very well could have been that all of this drama happened because she wanted to have a fashion line, starting out with sunglasses. That could very well be the case. However, I don't see that her glasses line would be the reason why all eight girls would say she's not prioritizing the group over us. Because as we've discussed before, other girls in the group have had other gigs. They've done things. They've done OSTs. They've done TV shows. They've done musicals. They've done recordings. They've done all of these things outside of the group. I really think that the main problem was kind of a mixture of the group or the fashion activities but also what SM put out in their statement and very rarely do I want to take SM's side because SM can eat ass all day from the way that they have broken down idol psyches SM is no SM is no hero in the story but SM wrote in their response to Jessica's Weibo post that Jessica had told them that they were only going to get one more album out of her and then she was leaving the group and they were trying to work that out. And then she apparently pushed up some of the dates for her design line. And Tyler Kwan is a major investor in the design line. And I have reason to believe, just based, if we're doing it both sides, if we're trying to be even, I told you about the love bombing that I suspected Alex of in the story. I told you about the fact that, you know, I feel like Jessica's kind of a narcissist. I think that Tyler Kwan played into Jessica's narcissism, kind of played into Jessica's naivete. You know, definitely he was pumping her up and gassing her up and telling her, you're the most important person in this group. And all allegedly, all this is alleged, by the way, this is my own imaginings of the way this happened. Gassing her up, telling her she's the most important in the person in the group. And I think that Tyler Kwan had a plan, an exit plan about how... Jessica was going to transition from being a girls generation member into being a fashion designer and then on the tail end of that getting out of her SM contract signing on with Coradell and then becoming a soloist and I think that Tyler Kwan had a meticulous timeline in place and he said in order to get this timeline started you need to indicate to SM that you no longer want to be a part of girls generation because your contract is coming up soon renewal time is coming and you, they need to know that you're going to issue a statement letting people know that you're going to be not with 
Girls Generation after this last album. We're going to announce that your last, that the next album for Girls Generation is going to be your last album. Generate some hype. Do a goodbye tour. Hugs and kisses. Fan meets. Everything else. And then we're going to tell everybody you're devoting your time to your fashion line. Get the fans really into the fashion line. And then say, oh, you guys, I just miss music so much let's release some music and he had come up with a way to try to carry her fan base into their new venture because i'm sure he was telling her you're the most popular member of the group you're the best member of the group you're the best looking a b c and d and then i think she i think rachel not rachel jessica took some of the girls of sm of snsd into her confidence and said this is the plan and i'm telling you because uh, you need to get your shit together too and get like me, get smart like me. And I think maybe some of the people she chose to tell either had loose lips or they were like, but I want to keep this or I know I'm not the most popular member and everything that I'm doing is a part of this group and you're about to screw over the thing that matters the most in terms of my popularity and my relevance in the entertainment field. And I think they did all get together and tell us and listen, Jessica's already told us this is what she's trying to do and I don't feel like making nice and smiley smiley when I know that she wants us to basically give her a graceful exit out of this. Also if we're going by the Justin Timberlake theory of leaving your group first whoever leaves this group first gets the most support and takes the most fans with them and personally we don't think that she deserves that because out of all of us she's not even the best. She's not the best dancer. We don't think she's the best vocalist. Uh, yeah, this is how we feel. So I think it's a mixture of both. I think it is Jessica informed SM what her exit plan was and basically told him, I'm fixing to do this. I think the other girl said, we know she's fixing to do this and we don't think it's fair because some of us don't have the luxury of having all the things in the world to do and a rich boyfriend to finance those dreams. And so this is how things happened. I think that Tyler Kwan convinced Jessica Jung to write a check that her ass could not cash. So back to the story. After she puts the letter online, of course, it's a media shitstorm. Everybody is concerned about what the fuck is going on. Um, and then Akari shows up to her house. And Akari shows up to her house to lend a sympathetic ear to Rachel. Apparently, Leah, Rachel's little sister, DM'd Akari. Something that Rachel could have done when she was like, I don't have Akari's number anymore. She could have DM'd Akari to talk to her, but she never thought of that. Leah did. Uh, Leah DMs Akari. Akari shows up. And Rachel, knowing what kind of shitty person she is, is like, are you here to gloat? And Akari's like, no. You know, we're not really friends like that anymore. But I know where you're at in terms of hitting rock bottom. This is a huge deal. It's a life-changing thing. Been there, done that. I've been kicked out of DB Entertainment. I know what it's like to have to redo everything, restart everything. And I'm here to let you know, once you reach rock bottom, you realize what your priorities are. You realize that you can do this and you move on. And then Akari tells a story about how after she left DB and she went to her new company, she was getting, she was going to be not included in the new group that she's a part of now, Teen Valentine, and that her mother begged the company to let her join Teen Valentine, but it was on the provision that Akari get new, a nose job, eyelid lift, forehead enhancement. And Akari talks about how it really fucked with her mental health because every time she would see herself she didn't look like herself and she could see all these good things happening all this publicity and being a part of a group and going on television shows happening to the akari who doesn't look like herself in the mirror the akari she's known all her life and that she decided to get mental health uh therapy because she was slowly starting to disassociate and it was causing her to have a lot of issues in appreciating that this is really happening to her and that she deserves these things because she's still her inside and the way that jessica writes these conversations with akari if you don't read any other chapter of this book i highly recommend that you read chapter 28 because akari is trying to talk to rachel is like really trying to have a genuine conversation and some of the shit that Rachel says to her is so fucking 
it was just like she has no no patience with her or she expects akari to treat her the same way she treated akari and it's it's stunning it's stunning okay so i am going to go let's see here not chapter 20 it's yeah it's chapter 20 it is okay so akari shows up to the house and Rachel's is like, Akari, I know things didn't end all that well between us, but because she thinks that Akari is there to basically be like, ha, bitch, I saw that you fell. First of all, the fact that Rachel assumes that about Akari, even though her and Akari used to be friends, projecting much. She knows how she treated Akari, so she thinks Akari would treat her the same way, not realizing that Akari was a far better person than Rachel ever was. And then... uh she's gonna have this conversation with her um she's like i came to talk to you because i get it about how the industry can be and she's like um i've never told anybody something okay i'm gonna read i'm just gonna read this because me summarizing it while i'm trying to read is not working so here it goes things were always tough even when i was training at db but after I got traded, it just got a lot worse. I was set to debut with Teen Valentine, but at the last second, they decided to kick me out. My mom had to beg the label to take me back. She said she'd pay for every single plastic surgery they wanted me to do. Wow, I had no idea. Not many people do, so that's what happened. I did it all. They took me back and put me in the group. All it took was my mom forcing me to get new eyes, new nose, and a new forehead. But there's a piece of it I haven't told anyone, not even my mom. She looks at me with so much sadness and depth, it almost takes my breath away. And you want to tell me? Why? I ask, genuinely curious. That's not how that conversation's supposed to go. What's supposed to happen is, there's something I never told people. And if you're an active listener and a real listener, you recognize that this person is about to open up to you. And you give them the space they need to open up instead of saying, why are you telling me this? That's a bitch move. That's a sincere, hardcore bitch move. So Akari says, I don't know why. Maybe because after all these years, I have regrets too. I don't know. Maybe I needed you a long time ago and I was too afraid to admit it. And then we'd grown apart and I felt like it was too late. I have the urge to wrap my arms around here, but I don't. I'm listening now, I tell her. And then she talks about how she has this mental health death. And then Rachel's response is, Oh, Akari, I'm trying not to cry at her story. As fragile as, as I've been feeling lately, this is Akari's moment, not mine. I need to be strong for her, not make it about me. So even then she recognizes, I would like to make this moment about me, but that would be tacky right now. Let me go ahead and shush up. And then um, she says, I'm so, so sorry. I wish I had known. I wish I had been there for you. I should have. That's what friends do. And I failed you on that. It's hard for me to say these words, let alone to admit they're true. I'm not used to failing at anything, not truly, and especially not something important and meaningful and deep like this. I'm sorry about everything I add, but especially for the ways I hurt you. If I could go back and do things differently, I would. I hang my head, feeling the full brunt of my regret. It hurts to acknowledge it, but it also feels good to finally say it out loud. I wish I had been by your side through all of it. Akari clears her throat. It's okay, though. Really, it is. I didn't come here just to try and get an apology out of you. I really have moved on. She tucks her cropped hair behind her ear and looks me in the eye. I had some help getting through it. Professional help. And then this is the part where she does the obligatory mental health and K-pop is not treated nicely, yada, yada, yada. One paragraph. Akari says, anyways... We have a new album coming out, and it's already getting amazing early press, so honestly, I'm doing better than ever. In fact, that's why I came over, to tell you I'm a badass bitch and I'm flying high, she says with a jokey snap of her fingers. I give a surprised laugh. Well, that's amazing. I'm happy for you. I'm sorry I'm such a sad state to celebrate you, though. Akari. Oh, Rachel, you don't get it, she takes my hand. That's my point. I know what rock bottom is. Been there, seen that, hated it with a vengeance. I was angry at the industry. I felt betrayed. I felt unsure of what came next or what any of it meant to me. I worried I'd never be able to trust anyone again because it felt like no one really loved me for me. But I'm living proof that after rock bottom, life gets better again. Not just better though, like way better. 
I don't know, Kari. Maybe that's just because you're a super badass bitch. <laughs> I'm not sure it works out like that for everyone. Well, yes, I do possess exceptional level badassery, she says with mock bravado. But I guarantee that life will get better, even for a mere mortal like you. Because here's the deal. When you face the worst thing, when you face what you fear most when you're suddenly free of it you realize if you survive that nothing can break you does that make sense i'm in a place now where i love new me and i feel a kind of freedom i didn't used to have when we were younger i was always in your shadow when we were trainees and i would never let that happen now lol thank you i whisper thank you for telling me just then my phone rings it's carly matheson i say oh my god what does she want I have no idea, I answer truthfully. Well, go ahead and take it, Akari says. I have to run now anyways, but I'm glad I got to see you. She gives me a quick hug, not a long, cozy, meaningful friend hug, just a sweet passing gesture, a hug that feels a lot like moving on. I said justice for Akari in my previous discussions of the book Shine. I've said it even a couple of times in, in Bright. Akari literally shows up just to be like the magical friend for Rachel and nothing else. They could have filled that with Rachel's twin best friends. They could have filled that with Leah. They could have filled that with anybody else. Uh, there's another singer here that got taken out of her group for dating. Any Carly, Carly Matheson could have been the one because she gets a whole dialogue in here too. But the fact that that's how they decide to wrap the bow up on Akari, you just don't get it, do you, Jessica? You really and truly just don't get it. So Carly Matheson gets on the phone, says that Discipline still wants to work with Rachel. They want her to have a solo gig and they want her to make bags exclusively for them and that Rachel should be happy because her Rachel bag is doing better than ever. All the bad press has made a lot of people come and buy the bags because they're interested in the line now and everything's great and this is a chance to start over and you're fabulous and wonderful. Don't ever change, girl. Um, so then... Right after that, Rachel's like, you know what? You're right. New, new, new Rachel, new look, new me, new day, new me. And she fucking starts the next chapter. No, no kind of relation to like, you know, after that, I spent the next few days putting together this, that, the other, nothing like that. She starts the next chapter at the airport, going up to Alex, hugging him, telling him I love you. He fist pumps and she's like, well, now that the paparazzi's all over me and they believe I have a boyfriend, I'm just going to go out in public and show everybody I have a boyfriend. Again, no one gives a fuck about your relationship with Tyler Kwan, Jessica. I know there's some people who may be like, oh, this is such a romantic story. Those are people blowing smoke up your ass. No one gives a fuck about Tyler Kwan. Not here. Not here. Your, your love story is lame. I'm sorry. You think it's romantic and whirlwind. The rest of us think your love story is lame. So that happens. And then right after that is her going to the discipline uh, fan meet. And when she gets out there, there's thousands upon thousands of people waiting for her, all wearing like Rachel headbands and saying, we love you, Rachel. You're the best, Rachel. You're everything, Rachel. And that's like pretty much where the story ends alex in the epilogue is setting up his apartment and rachel's over there helping him set up his, her his apartment she gets a random text message from somebody talking about this isn't over and you think that you won but just know your little sister is still at db entertainment and that's it she doesn't talk about like the fact that during the conversation when DB fired her, they said, you have four more years on your contract. And as we know, she had more time on her SM contract. But I think at the start of 2015 is when SM ended their contract with Jessica. So that should have been a discussion, like that kind of weird, murky time between the time that Jessica uploaded the letter on Weibo to the time that her contract was officially over with the record label. That's a whole great area that we all would like to know more information about. But yeah, I mean, it's just on the whole, if you can get a used copy of Bright, I highly recommend it. Um, because you shouldn't pay new money for that. I did for y'all, but I, I don't recommend it. But also, I think that probably, really and truly, this was the last gasp for Jessica Jung. I don't know where to go from here. Like, I, 
if this was her telling as much as she can due to NDAs and everything else, because I think part of her getting out of her SM contract was probably signing NDAs. If this is the best that she can do under her NDAs, there's nothing left to tell. There's there's no other, she can't answer the other questions either because they're incriminating or because she actually legally can't. She can't answer any other questions. She's basically leveraged herself on her last bit of being. The only thing left to do is hope that somebody reads these books and really and truly wants to take money into turning these into movies. But outside of that, there's nowhere left to go for Jessica on this. And it really makes me sad because she's gonna find out in the next couple of years that unless Tyler Kwan is coming up with the coins to finance the life, this is it. This is the last gasp. And I really hate that for her. I really, really do. Because I really like the Jessica from the Weibo letter. That bitch deserves more, but I don't think she's gonna get more. Anyway, thank you for joining me with this. This was an experience and I will talk to y'all later. Bye.